Since we can't go from our homes to the lab, I thought we'd do the next best thing and bring the lab into the home, specifically into Dr. Zahn's kitchen, which is where we are now. So you know what this means, Zahn? What? What does it mean, Chris? What's that smell? Is it jam? It is jam, but I can also smell lots of other things as well. When did you last have a bath? Ah, oh, I can tell you exactly when I last had a bath, Chris. It was, let me see, last Tuesday at 9.42am. I remember because I just finished setting up my underpants experiment for the 87th day in a row. Uh, your underpants experiment was shut down a long time ago by the lab health and safety officer, i.e. me. Well, uh, I mean, it's still running in that cupboard there. What, in this cupboard here? Yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. Look, go and get showered and changed immediately because it's time for today's Do Try This at Home. Ooh, fantastic. We've rigged my kitchen with every gadget you can think of. We're going to get up, close and personal. I am literally calling the shots. Look at this. Ooh, action! Watch how it's done, Chris. Bacteria, take one. Well, go on. Put the clapperboard down. Today's topic is bacteria. Now, bacteria are basically the simplest form of life on Earth. They are single-celled organisms, and they come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Some of them are spheres, some of them are rods, and some of them are little spirals. Let's have a quiz. Do you know how long bacteria have been on planet Earth? Is it A, thousands of years, B, millions of years, or C, billions of years? Well, the answer is C, billions of years. They've been around for a very long time indeed. Bacteria were one of the first forms of life to evolve on planet Earth. And they are all around us. So, Zand, I want you to get us some bacteria from your fridge. How dare you? I don't have any bacteria in my fridge. I clean it at least once every two years. Firstly, that is not true. And second of all, bacteria are everywhere. All right, but to do this, I will direct the scene extremely effectively with my 360-degree camera. Say hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. We can both say hello at the same time. OK, here we go. I'm on my way to the fridge. <laughs> Mini Zod! Mini Chris! Mini Rob, stop messing around! Now, let me see. Ah, there we go. I bet you thought I was just going to get out some fridge scuzz, but instead, I've got bacteria in the yoghurt. You lot behave in there. There you go, Chris. Bacteria. And bacteria aren't easy to see. They're extremely small and they're see-through, so we need to stain them and use a microscope. Chris, take it away. So you take a clean microscope slide. Try to be delicate, Zand. Smear some yoghurt on it with a little water. And then in the lab, we have lots of different dyes to stain bacteria, but the one we're going to use here is called methylene blue. Whoa, not too much. And carefully lower the cover slip over the yoghurt and the dye. Easy does it. Leave it for a minute and then put that under the microscope. Look, to be perfectly honest, Chris, I don't really have a clue what I'm looking at here. Well, there's a clear reason for that, Zand. Now, I have a question for you. What has two thumbs, is one of us, and has postgraduate training in microbiology? Is it me? No, Zand, it's me. <laughs> and to really understand what you're looking at, you need a slightly better microscope, like I've got right here. This is the kind of microscope that we use in a lab, or you might have it at your school. So let's have a look. Wow, watch them go. That's amazing. You can see all the bacteria moving around. Now, we often think of bacteria as being bad. But there are lots of good bacteria, like the lactobacillus in yoghurt. You've actually got a gut full of good bacteria. There are loads and loads of different species, and they do all kinds of different things. Some of them are bacteria, some of them are yeast. And in fact, you have more bacterial cells in your body than you do human cells. So by some measurements, you are more bacteria than you are human. <laughs> 
Now together, this collection of microorganisms on your skin and found throughout your gut is known as your microbiome. microbiome. I'm wearing my microbiome shirt. Now the little ones living inside your guts do all kinds of jobs. They help you digest the food that you eat. So there's lots of food that you eat that your body actually can't break down, especially foods like fibre. And that's where you need to enlist the help of the microorganisms in your gut. They break down the fibre and produce lots of useful things that your body needs. And there you go. You can see them hard at work in my descending colon. As well as that, they help your body produce energy. Lots of the chemicals produced by the bacteria are great fuel for your heart and brain. By having good bacteria in your butt, in your butt, in your gut. In your butt? Well, that is where they are. That is sort of where they are. Your butt is a part of your gut. The end, the end. Exactly, Chris. The friendly bacteria inside your gut like living there, and so they get rid of any bad bacteria that might come in and try and make it their home for you. Look, Chris, on my T-shirt, you can see the good bacteria fighting off the bad bacteria. And as well as those other jobs, your microbiome also helps with your brain function and with your mental health. If you look after your microbiome by feeding it the right kind of food, then it will look after you. <laughs> look at this, Chris. There are loads of the little guys living in there. That's right, you have literally tens of trillions of bacteria in your gut and they rely on you to feed them properly. And the best way of doing that is to eat lots and lots of fibre and lots and lots of vegetables and fruit. I've lost one. It's all right. I've got trillions more. Zon, do you know what else is true about the microbiome? Everyone's is unique. So even though Zant and I are genetically identical, the species of bacteria and microorganisms living on and in us will be unique to us as individuals. You know what else else is true about the microbiome, Chris? Uh, no, I think we've covered pretty much everything. No, we haven't, Chris. They also <laughs> make gases. Today, we're going to be making farts in our Do Try This at Home experiment. <laughs> For this, you will need one small bottle, some hot water from the hot tap. Move over. Nice and hot. Some dry yeast. You can buy this at almost any supermarket. Two tablespoons of sugar. A balloon. And some tissue paper rolled into a funnel shape. Step one, blow the balloon up and then let the air out. This makes it nice and stretchy. What are you doing? I don't know. It took me by surprise. Go and get it. Now, that balloon is nicely stretched out, and the bottle is a quarter filled with hot water. Now, be careful with the hot tap. Then you're going to get your funnel, which you can make of tissue paper or paper, or you could use an actual funnel if you have one. And you're going to add the sugar into the warm water and give it a swell so it all dissolves. And now, using the same funnel, add the yeast. Now put the balloon on top as soon as you've added the yeast and then you can swirl it around because the yeast is going to start to make gas. And now the fart action begins. But you have to wait about 5 to 15 minutes so we can just wait as the yeast starts to make gas, the balloon will start to fill up. I tell you who can look after this for the next 15 minutes, Chris. Billy Bones. He's brilliant at waiting. Most skeletons are. They've been waiting for ages. It's a bit boring being a skeleton. I don't mind looking after the fart experiment. Ooh, thanks, Billy. Well, Sandy, uh, while we're waiting, did you know that uh, the food you eat is broken down uh, in part by the bacteria in your large intestine and that's what produces the gases uh, that are the basis of farts? Of course I knew that, Chris. That's the entire reason we're doing the experiment today. I mean, I literally just explained it. Do you know that less than half the people in the world have any methane in their farts at all? Hmm? Did you know that? Yes, I did know that, Zant. 
But did you know that even in those people that do produce methane, the smell in their farts is not from the methane. Methane doesn't have a smell. It's from very, very tiny amounts of very, very smelly chemicals. Chemicals like hydrogen sulfide. And the amount of that is dependent on the food that you have eaten. Wait a minute. Look at the balloon. Come on, farty. It's gonna go. You're almost there. And there it is. Come on, you little beauties. Now, where was I? Ah. Oh. Do you know what kind of smelly fart foods are in my stinky fart drawer in my fridge? Hmm? Do you know that? Do you? No, I don't. He does not know it. Well, I'm going to show you using my 360 degree camera. Here we go, Chris. Are you looking forward to this? Not really. Now, let's have a look and see what's in the fridge. Here we go. This is my stinky fart drawer. And if we have a look inside it, what we can see is that I've got chicken, mackerel, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, onions, and eggs. A lot of those foods contain sulfur, and the sulfur can help your gut bacteria make a very stinky gas called hydrogen sulfide. As Chris mentioned earlier, that's one of the things that makes your farts smell like rotten eggs. Those are my favourite kind of farts. And that's why I've got a stinky fart drawer in my fridge. I think I can smell the fart drawer from here. It's not the fart drawer, Chris. The fridge smells fine. It's my bottom. Let's get back to our fart balloon. You can do it. Make the farts. Fill the balloon. Well, Chris, we've got a very good amount of fart in the bottle. Now, if I just get the balloon off gently, I have the fart trapped here in the balloon. Just like when the bacteria in your guts make gas, to turn it into a fart, you need to let it out. Here we go, Chris. Prepare to get face farted. Three, two, one. <laughs> I don't normally sound like that. Well, you need to eat more fiber. It's not amazing. We made a fart. That is quite amazing, actually. And a little bit smelly. Well, I tell you what, Chris, to round off this brilliant do try this at home, I've prepared a bacteria joke. <clears throat> what is a bacteria's favorite country? I don't know. Germany! Like a germ? Like a bacteria's a germ? Germany? Get it? <laughs>